The subject of our first broadcast is a good one. It's, it's a subject that I've uh, uh, just been itching to, to share with you all. It is Abraham the Gentile. Yes, I said it, and I'll say it again. Abraham was a Gentile long before um, he became a covenant person, a covenant person of the Most High through circumcision. He received promises as a Gentile, and he himself was a Gentile when he received the promises, when his sins were, were, were imputed, when his sins, when his sins were uh, taken away and forgiven, and righteousness was imputed through faith. So it becomes increasingly easy for us now to understand how that righteousness, which is according to faith, is imputed on people called Gentiles. If Abraham, the father of us all, all the children of Jacob, he's our great grandfather. If he's the father of us all and he was a Gentile, then that would make Isaac a Gentile and that would make Jacob a a Gentile, for, J for neither Abraham, Isaac, nor Jacob would be considered Jews. You have to have come from Judah, the son of Jacob, or you'd have to be born in the region known as Judea to be considered a Jew. Let that sink in for a moment. So all those places that you see, Jews and Gentiles in the New Testament, in the Pauline epistles, Will you please put in there people from Judea and the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for Gentiles? Because that's who they are. I know this uh, particular teaching was, is going to set uh, Constantine Christianity back to its infancy. The house of cause of Constantine Christianity is, is finally being dismantled. And I, could, I can just say it, all praise to the Most High for that. All praises. Uh, one of their own prosperity preachers just recently came out and said that money tithing was not correct. And he'd been teaching money tithing for two or three decades. And he's finally repented of it. It's, a, it's all coming up unglued right before our very eyes. And the uh, Hebraic faith is continuing to grow by leaps and bounds. And as more of the children of Jacob return to our most high power, return to keeping the laws, statutes, commandments, judgments, ordinances, precepts, return to walking in his way, word, and will, and return to obeying his voice, then the, the captivity of his people will be turned, and he will return unto us as we returned unto him. Hallelujah. So if you want to hasten the return of a higher, it's simple. Come back to obedience, walk in the truth, and walk in the light, and have fellowship with him through the blood of his son, Yeshua, the Messiah, and righteousness, which we're going to read about in a moment. Let's go. Romans chapter 4, verse 1. I'm reading from the Yahshua High Bible Scriptures. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found? Now, we want to make this clear, that Abraham doesn't have spiritual children. Let's make it clear. Paul is making it clear here that Abraham, our father, pertains to the flesh. These are the only people Paul talked about. I'll read that verse again. Romans 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found? What about the flesh and blood? and bone children of Abraham. Let's see. For if Abraham would justify by works, he had whereof to glory, but not before Ahiah. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed Ahiah, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So Abraham believed a voice that he heard. He rose up from the from the land of his, of his fathers and went to a land he didn't even know of. All he had was a voice. All he had to go on was a word. That's it. Now, did the Most High grow in his, uh, as Abraham walked this out, did the Most High grow in his uh, dealings with Abraham? Of course he did. The Most High appeared and walked between, between sacrificed animals' blood and made a covenant with Abraham. Wow. The Most High came himself and made that covenant with Abraham. 
But it didn't start out that way. It started out, he spoke to him, he said, rise, leave the area of Chaldea, leave your father's house and go to a land which I will show you. And Abraham believed. And that was counted for righteousness. And you should believe as you hear the voice of Ahia, as you hear the master's voice, and you hear the voice of the Messiah, walk after it. Continue to follow after his word. He said, my sheep, your shot speaking, he said, my sheep know my voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Quit following strangers' voices and start following the voice of the word, which is Yasha the Messiah. All praises. For Abraham was justified by the works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before Ahab. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed Ahab, and it was accounted for him unto, for, unto him for righteousness. Now to him that works is the reward not reckoned of grace or favor, but of debt. But to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. See, we got to believe on him that justifies the, the, the ones who are walking in darkness. We got to believe on him that justifies and makes righteous those who are unrighteous. And then your faith will be counted for righteousness. Let's read on. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man whom Ahia imputed righteousness without works. Now, here is a, def a biblical definition of what it means to have imputed righteousness, have righteousness counted to your account without doing anything except believing on, on the Most High. Let's read. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. So, it's through faith in Ahia and his son Yasha. That your sins get covered and your transgressions get erased. That your iniquity is forgiven. Let's continue to read. Verse 8, Romans 4, 8. Blessed is the man to whom a high will not impute sin or not count sin against. See, most high count our sins against us. We, like our father, Abraham, the Gentile, have believed on him who is invisible. We heard the voice of the Messiah. We heard his voice. And we came out of darkness into the marvelous light. We believed on him. And Ahiah himself has imputed righteousness unto us, just like he did for Abraham, our forefather. Abraham the Gentile. Let's continue reading. Romans chapter 4, verse 9. Comes this blessing then upon the circumcision only. Or upon the uncircumcision also. So here we have two groups of people being described. The circumcision and the uncircumcision. The circumcision are referred to as Jews in the Pauline epistle. The uncircumcision are, are, are considered Gentiles in the epistles. To be, to be a Gentile, according to the Pauline epistles, the only thing that has to be about you is that you're, an, that you're uncircumcised. Now, Abraham, our forefather, was uncircumcised when he received the promise. That's how the promise could be on the uncircumcised, his children. Because we're going to see that those promises were not made to everybody, but to the seed of Abraham, the Gentile. Let's read. And I hope you get this. I really do. Those Gentiles in the New Testament are of the seed of Abraham, the Gentile. I told you. Constantine Christianity just took it out. This is coming this blessings upon them, uh, then upon the circumcision only, upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Not as a covenant person, not as an obedient one to the covenant, but a person who was not circumcised, who was not under a covenant. Wow. He received this blessing of, of having his faith counted for righteousness before, the, before he entered the covenant of circumcision. Wow. He 
was a Gentile when he when his sins were forgiven. He was a Gentile when the Most High blessed him and gave him promises. Wow. He was a Gentile. He was not. He was never a Jew. Let's make that clear. He was never of Yasharah. You would have to come from Jacob to be of Yasharah. But he was of Jethro. He was of the upright of the Most High. Absolutely. All praises. I love this teaching. I really do. Romans chapter t uh, 4 verse 10. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. He was a Gentile. Abraham was a Gentile when he received this blessing. And he received the sign of circumcision, the seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteous might be imputed unto them also. So when you're an uncircumcised descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are considered a Gentile, just like Father Abraham was when he received this blessing, when he received this for the forgiveness of his sins, when he received righteousness, it was before he entered the covenant of circumcision. Which, in the New Testament, if you're circumcised, you are considered a Jew, according to Romans chapter 2. Wow. According to the book of Ephesians, you're a Gentile if you're uncircumcised. According to the book of Romans chapter 2, you're a Jew if you're circumcised. And we know that Abraham wasn't a Jew, Isaac wasn't a Jew, and Jacob wasn't a Jew. But as we stated previously, you have to come from either the, the, the tribe of Judah or live in the region of Judea to be considered a Jew, biblically. So, Abraham was never a Jew, ever. He was also a Gentile. But let's continue to read. I'll read verse 12 again. And the father of circumcision to them who are not who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that of that faith that our father Abraham which he had being yet uncircumcised. So when he, when he, the faith he had when he was yet a Gentile. He was a Gentile, children. Isaac was a Gentile. Until he was circumcised. Then he was part of the covenant of circumcision. Jacob was a Gentile until he was circumcised and then he became part of the covenant. The Messiah was a Gentile until he was circumcised and he became part of the covenant. But you, you can receive forgiveness of sins and the blessing thereof outside of the covenant of circumcision for our forefather Abraham did. I'll read it again. Romans chapter 4, verse 12. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith. So Abraham and his seed were the only people who got promised. You got to be of the seed of Abraham. Who would that be? And Isaac shall his seed be called. That's what scriptures say. In Romans chapter 9. And who was the seed of Isaac? That had a covenant. Jacob, 
Esau didn't have a company. Was Esau circumcised? I have no evidence that he wasn't. But he didn't have a covenant. Ishmael was circumcised. He didn't have a covenant. And the most I said, I will bless Ishmael, but Jacob, but my covenant is with, Jacob, with, with Isaac. So just because you've received uh, the, the, the covenant of circumcision does not make you a, the seed of Abraham. You got to be in the direct line of Abraham and have a covenant which Abraham had. It has to pass on to you through the will and through the direction of a high himself. He chose to have to set his covenant with Isaac and not Ishmael. He chose to set his covenant with Jacob and not Esau. He chose to set his covenant with the 12 tribes of Yasharal and no one else. These are the decisions of Ohio, and it is marvelous in my eyes. All praises. So take part in the covenant, children. Walk in it. You got a covenant with the Most High if you're of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you're of the 12 tribes of Yasharal, may, may the Most High be blessed. But he has chosen you from all the people of all the families of the earth, all the people of the earth, to lay his covenant upon. His new covenant is yours. He has put his word in your heart. And his spirit is dwelling in you that you may follow it. Let's keep reading. Romans chapter 4, verse 13, for the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise is made of none effect. See, the, the, the law is not about faith or promises. Forget it. I'll say that one more time for clarity. The law is not about faith or promises. Nor is circumcision about these things. That faith and promises are part of the covenant the most high made with the with, with Abraham and his seed. So let's continue to read. I read verse 14 again, Romans 4 14. For if for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise is made of none effect, because the law works wrath. For where no instruction in the Torah law against an action, there then there is no transgression. It says in the King James, where there is no law, there is no transgression. You hear a lot of people quote that. I quote that all the time. People just make up laws, especially amongst the Hebraic faith. They make things uh, against the most high the word that are, that are not found in there. I don't do it, and this is why I don't do it. But there's no law. There's no transgression. Now, it may not be good for you to do it, but there's no law against it. The apostle Paul himself said, though, though all things are lawful, not everything's expedient or good for you. So you have to be led by the spirit on what you should and should not partake of. If it's a law against it, then you know not to do it. But if it's not a law against it, let the spirit of a higher guide you. Should I or should I not take part in that? All oh, praises. I'll read that again. Because the law works wrath. Verse, uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 15. Because the law works wrath. For where no instruction in the Torah law against an action, then there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end that to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. When you highlight that in your book of scriptures, the promise is sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but that with but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Who is the, he the father of? All those of the seed. That all 
is all the seed to whom the promise is sure to. Remember here at the house house, we have a saying, all ain't everybody. Especially when we're talking about promises. All can't be everybody. For the promise is sure to all the seed. And Isaac shall the seed be called. According to Romans chapter 9. If you don't come from Isaac and Jacob, then you're not the seed. That you don't have any promises. We know that from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. If you're not of Yasharal, you don't have any promises. You don't have a covenant. You don't have any law. You don't have a you don't have a Messiah. I said this to a Constantine Christian in a response to a statement I made on a, on a, uh, another broadcast. I said, in accordance, in accordance with the scriptures, Romans, uh, Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 5, the children of Yahshua have the covenants, the promises, the law, the priesthood, the Messiah. We have it all. What, what is left for a Gentile? A true Gentile. A person that doesn't have a covenant. Not a Gentile like our father Abraham is, or was, until he was circumcised. But the, the kind of Gentile they think about when they see the word Gentile. Now we know what that's talking about now, don't we? See, you're going to look at the Pauline epistles in a whole new light. Hopefully. Because who's a Gentile? Those same children of Yasharah, those same children of Abraham, the seed of Abraham to whom the promises were made. Let's read that again. Therefore, this uh, Romans chapter 4, 16, verse 16, therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end that to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even a high who quickeneth the dead and called things that be not as though they were. Now, we, we hear a lot of uh, Constantine Christians talking about calling things that be not as though they were. Will you please look at that right quick, right here? It's a higher that does that. It's the most high, the great I am who does that. People don't get to do that. You can believe all you want to. You can't create a BB out of thin air. Get it straight. Who calls things that be not as though they were? A higher does. Let's read that again. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations before him whom he believed, even a higher, who quickeneth the dead and caused those things which be not as though they were. So it's a higher that does that, not people. So all you mm. blabbing and grabbing, claiming and claimers out there. You, like I said earlier, a few moments ago, you can't create a BB out of thin air. Just believing for it. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. But what is going to happen? That the promise is, 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 to, is to sure to all the seed. And Abraham was given a promise that he would be the father of many nations. Here is the 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 insertion point where all these other people from all other nations try to get in on this. Here's, here's what he died in. See, 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 Brother Holly, it says right there that Abraham will be the father of many nations. Go to Genesis chapter 48 and read where Ephraim shall be a multitude of nations. And we we talk on the on these channels in recent in recent weeks that that term multitude of nations can also be the same term used as fullness of 
the Gentiles. We're learning today that Abraham himself was a Gentile. And he got the blessing of the forgiveness of his sins while being a Gentile. Through faith. Through righteousness. If Abraham can be a Gentile, so can I. And so can you. If you're a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you are not uh, circumcised, and you're a male, and you're not circumcised, then you're a Gentile. But that doesn't depart you from the covenant. Because you can have your sins forgiven through faith, just like Father Abraham did. For the promise is sure to you, because you're part of his seed. Hope that's good news. Romans chapter 4, verse 18, who against hope believed in hope that he might become a father of many nations according to that which it was spoken, so shall thy seed be. So who's the seed of Abraham? Be Isaac. Who's the seed of Isaac? That would be Jacob. Who's the seed of Jacob? His 12 sons, the patriarchs as they're referred to, the 12 patriarchs. Those are the many nations. For Ephraim, the son of Joseph, was referred to as being the, will be, could become many nations. Ephraim will become many nations. Ephraim, according to the book of Hosea, makes himself with multiple multiplicities of nations. Ephraim is the going that the, the Apostle Paul went to preach to because he's looking for Gentiles. Gentiles who were the seed of Abraham. Let's keep on. <laughs> Let's keep on. Let's read verse uh, 18 again. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. And being now weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of Ahiah through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to Allah, and being fully persuaded. Here is what faith looks like. Here is a great definition of faith. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. So you, have, you as a covenant child, as a child of Jacob, you have been given all the promises. And all the promises are, 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 are yes and aman in Yasha Messiah according to the book of Philippians. Every promise of a life in Yasha is yes and aman or yes and so be it. All things are yours according to the Apostle Paul in his epistles and whom we all trust. So don't stagger through unbelief. Lay hold of the promises. Lay hold of eternal life. Through faith and patience, you'll inherit the promises. I'll read it again. Romans 4, 21. And being fully persuaded that he, that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. When you are at a place where you embrace the promise of eternal life and believe that the Most High who promised you eternal life through his son, Yahshua the Messiah, is able to give you that eternal life, then that's when righteousness is imputed to you, just like Abraham when he was yet a Gentile. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. It just won't mean for his sake alone. Let's see what else. But for us also, to whom it was imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Yasha, our master, from the dead, you believe on a higher, then, you, then righteousness will be imputed unto you as well. Who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. 
we have proven on this channel that the Most High had a covenant with the children of Jacob to take our sins away. That Yahshua came in the name of that covenant to do, do just that. says later on in the same book of Romans that he that we that the Most High has a covenant to take sin away from Jacob. Wow. So let's review. Abraham was a Gentile. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were never Jews. It's going to take you some time to wrap your head around this. I agree. For you have thought that Abraham was a Jew all along, but he wasn't, never was. Now he was circumcised, yes. And he got, and he got and came under the covenant of circumcision. Yes, he did. And so did Isaac, and so did Jacob. But at no time did they ever become Jews. For you must spring from Judah or the region of Judea to be considered a Jew biblically. And you must partake of circumcision according to Romans chapter 2 to be considered a Jew. Not just of your flesh but also of your heart. But if you're uncircumcised of your flesh you can have your sins forgiven just like father Abraham did through the imputed righteousness based on faith embrace the promise Yasha came that you might have eternal life lay hold of the promise don't turn from it believe that the one who made the promise can also perform it and you too will have your sins forgiven and you too can be a partaker of the eternal life that was promised to us through Yahshua Messiah. All praise to the Most High, Ahiah, and to his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah.